What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So I know that right now, when you guys are watching this, it'll be Super Bowl Sunday. And for a lot of you, you're kind of coming out of the big polar vortex freeze, and you're actually experiencing some warmer temperatures that you probably didn't expect to see. What's interesting about that is, is we actually got a lot colder temperatures than we're used to even down here. We had nights down into the upper 30s sustained for a while. And what that did is it basically put my grass almost into dormancy. You can see um, we're still green, um, but it is really trying to check out for sure. This is Floratam right here, and it is definitely doing its best to check out. Um, but now we're back up and warm. We're back up into the 70s. Everything's really back to our normal pattern now, so I suspect that this will come out really quick. And it just kind of illustrates what can happen, especially down here in Florida, as you're coming into these weird transition times. You know, you can go in and out of cold and heat and things like that. And it just lets you know that your lawn, it's not like it just all wakes up on one single day. Anyway, since there's nothing really going on here in the lawn right now, you know, I put furt down, stuff like that, but I can't do anything. It hasn't grown. I can't mow it. I just need to kind of wait and just let it do its thing right now and wake itself back up again. I figure what I'll do, though, is I'll answer a question that I got this week in email, and then I'll use that to take another trip down to the big box store because I got a lot of good feedback when I did that last week, and I went to the uh, Lowe's and I kind of went through some of the different uh, products that they have there that are related to pre-emergence. And I think what I'll do this week is I'll go, I'm gonna go to Home Depot this time and we'll look at post-emergent weed controls because that's kind of what the question that I got centered around. Now this is a Bermuda lawn and it's actually a suburb of Charlotte, North Carolina. So that gives you an idea what we're talking about here. LCN, I'm 25 and just bought my first home. Growing up, I didn't have much of a yard and so I didn't learn how to take care of one. The grass in the yard, though, at my house were in pretty bad shape when I bought them, and so I'm going to change that this year. I have Bermuda grass and lots of weeds, clover, some weird creeping weed that kills everything, and some crabgrass. Where do I start with trying to get my yard under control? Today I went to Home Depot. It's a little bit early, but I got excited after watching all these videos, and I bought a sprayer, a wide-range ortho weed killer, the one that doesn't kill grass, and Milorganite. Is that a good place to start? So before we talk about post-emergent weed control though, let's talk about two other topics I want to address real quick. One is the Milorganite, when should she fertilize? And then the second piece of the question is, is this a good place to start? I'm going to explain exactly where to start. So the first thing you'll notice in there is Vanessa, she got some Milorganite and I love that. It's great. It's a great way to start and it's exactly how I recommend you start is with some sort of an organic fertilizer that you can throw down and feel good about and get results with and not worry about hurting anything. So that's perfect. However, warm season long, you do not want to put any type of nitrogen fertilizer down until soil temperatures are at or approaching 65 degrees. That's because if there's chance of freeze still, which there definitely is outside of Charlotte, what'll happen is if you put something down on a warm day, it stays a little bit warm, the soil temperatures come up, the Bermuda starts starts to wake up and starts to grow and then you get a frost or a freeze that can really damage that plant really stunt it and actually cause it to thin out it could also invite disease if you happen to get this weird position of a lot of rain or a lot of wetness and a lot of humidity without the soil temperatures coming up that can also happen so it's best just to wait until like 65 and then you can start pushing it as hard as you want now the other thing you're going to want is a pre-emergent this is prodiamine and this is the water dispersible granule formulation i did like a comprehensive two blog posts on this. I want you to check this out. This is a product that is formulated for professionals. Prodiamine is just an active ingredient. I actually had somebody accuse me of pushing too much prodiamine that I'm sponsored by prodiamine. Guys, prodiamine is an active ingredient. It's a chemical compound. They're not sponsoring me. Uh, this happens to be made by Quali Pro, which is just a company that actually packages and, and gets the licensing and gets everything approved to be able to sell prodiamine in this particular form formulation. This formulation is formulated for pros. This would last you if you had a 5,000 square foot lawn and you used the yearly max every year, this would last you over 19 years. That is a lot of product. So again, if you want to get that, that's fine, but it's really highly concentrated and you want, and you're not able to spray it out of something like this jar sprayer. It's, this is just not precision enough. Um, you know, for something this concentrated. So I don't recommend this for beginners. However, you should go read because we talk about the soil temperature milestones. So that'll be linked below. That's all free content for you. And it's on my blog right now. So there's a couple different reasons why I recommend that all of you start with like an over-the-counter type weed control. Um, and the first one is, is because of fudge factor. So the companies that make these weed controls, and you know, I always recommend that you get a liquid concentrate and you mix that into a hand can, hand can and you spray that out over the lawn, either spot spray or blanket spray using a hand can pump sprayer. Uh, battery powered sprayer, even better, but I'm going to show you a minimum viable way to do it with just a regular two gallon pump sprayer. 
That said, they do offer a lot more fudge factor in those because the active ingredient is typically gonna be less concentrated in these over-the-counter kind of weed controls. And they do that on purpose because they know that you don't have, number one, the super high quality equipment that the pros do, right, which would allow you to deliver a more precision application. And secondly, they know you don't have quite the experience. So they kind of build in a little fudge factor with lower concentrations of active ingredients. Doesn't mean the stuff doesn't work. It works fine. It just may not zorch all the broadleaf in one app. It might take two or even three. But again, it's worth it for that built-in safety factor. The second thing is, is because of the formulation, they know where they're sending it to. They know what the typical weeds are in the area. And they know that it's going to take effect on a good majority of those weeds. I like to say 80%. You have to realize the company is not not going to send a weed control into Home Depot if it doesn't control the weeds in that area. Makes sense, right? They're smart. So it's going to control a good 80% of the weeds that you have. And most of you would be very happy if you had 80% fewer weeds in your lawn year over year. Uh, and then the last piece of it is typically they are going to seed in weed controls that are generally safe for the grass types in your area. There are a few exceptions like here where we have St. Augustine that's sensitive to a lot of things. As you guys know, Centipede and St. Augustine play nicely together with weed controls, but not much else. But for the rest of you guys, especially up north, pretty no-brainer most of the weed controls you're going to get at Home Depot in Northwest Indiana they're going to be safe on all the grass types you're going to come across um, but not an excuse not to read the label always read the label on everything so with that let's go check out a few weed controls that are available here at my Home Depot and even if these are not ones that are going to be applicable to you up north or whoever still look at the thinking behind it look at the strategy behind it look at how we're doing things so that way you can understand the why behind everything that you're doing as well all right let's do it All right, so here I am as I'm wandering around the Home Depot here real quick. I just wanna say that I get a lot of emails very similar to Vanessa's. First of all, I think it's pretty awesome if you're 25 and you already own a house. That is like super incredible. Um, but secondly, you're not alone if you're out there going, man, what do I do to my lawn? I mean, that's exactly why I started this channel. You're not a bad person because you didn't learn how to take care of the lawn when you were young. You're just learning how to take care of it now. And what do you do at the age of 25, 29, 30, 35, 45? You go to YouTube to learn. So. Okay, so I had Vanessa send me a picture of the bottle of the weed control that she got. She got a ready-to-use formulation, which means you can just hook it up and go and start spraying, no mixing, anything like that. This is a great way to get started. You're not going to be able to blanket spray your lawn with something like this, but if you got a few spots here and there you need to hit, you can. And she even sent a couple pictures of the main weed she's got. This one here is chickweed. I'd like to thank Pete Denny, Jason Creel, and Matt Martin for confirming these weeds for me. I hate doing online weed identification. It's just so tough with a two-dimensional picture and you can't see roots and everything else. So I blasted these out to them and they confirmed. And this other one here, this is false dandelion. So the weed control that Vanessa has will take care of these. And so what you want to look at are the active ingredients. This has got three auxin herbicides in it, all group four. So that's probably not the best thing, but that's what the MC... PP, yeah, you know me, is the 2,4-D and the dicamba. Those are all auxins, and so they all work in the same way. But this is a very common mix that you'll see. The quinclorac in there is for crabgrass, and that's post-emergent herbicide. It's only really going to work on early crabgrass, which you won't be seeing that yet. So go ahead and spray away, and you should be just fine with this. This is a good way to learn and kind of see how weed controls work. One key is, though, don't spray when temperatures at night are going under 45 degrees because we need the weed to be actively growing in order for the weed control to make its way through the plant. So here's what I found at my local Home Depot. Now this is down here in Florida, and you'll see that the active ingredients are similar. There's no quinclorac in here, and that's good because we have a lot of St. Augustine grass, but even so, look on the label here. It says St. Augustine grass, but not Floratam. Well, everybody here has Floratam, 99% do. So this is not a St. Augustine weed control, and you really need to start looking at that fine print when you're buying weed controls. This has worked great, though, for Bermuda, Zoysia, and Bahia as well. Um, again, the only challenge you have here is you have three auxin herbicides, all the same group. If you subscribe to my email, I'll kind of go into that a little bit more. It's something I've been learning a lot more from Matt Martin. And without going too technical in it, when you use a weed control that has multiple modes of action, and you'll see we do this with fungicides as well. We use different modes of action. You do that because it helps to stem the tide of herbicide resistance, which is something we've been hearing about more and more. All right, so the first weed control I came across is actually Image Kills Nuts Edge. I'm calling this more of a specialty product here, but you're going to see it. I mean, I'm assuming you're going to see this up into Georgia and up in that area too. Definitely going to see it where you have centipede. Active ingredient here, amazoquin. Uh, this is an amino acid inhibitor, so a little bit different mode of action than the other weed controls we're going to look at. But either way, I only recommend this one as a spot spray. Um, I'll show you why. Let me pull up the label here real quick. They're pretty much telling you they don't want you to blanket spray. That's how I get this. Because look, they've got spot treatment for hand can or 
whatever that little thing is right there. Either way, let's look. So for spot treatment, 2.5 ounces of the concentrate. Okay, that's fine. And they want you to put that in one gallon of water. That's that's what we're used to, that's fine. So 2.5 ounces in one gallon of water and then spot spray. But then if you wanna treat a larger area than that, they want you to come all the way down and do 0.8 fluid ounces in one gallon. And that only covers 200 square feet. So that's for a larger area of treatment. So it just tells me that they're like, bro, you need a lot more water if you're gonna blanket spray. And that also proves when you come down here, you can use a hose-in sprayer with this product because it's on the label. If they label it, there you go, orthodialin spray, or if you have an equivalent jar sprayer that you wanna use, then you can because it's on the label. But look at all the water they want. Here they're gonna show you if you're gonna blanket spray that this 24 ounce bottle of concentrate covers 6,000 square feet, so you do math. It's four ounces per thousand. That's the mix rate. Um, and what they're telling you though is, is that you need five gallons of water per thousand square feet. So they're telling you if you're gonna blanket spray like that, all the rates here kind of line up. They're all the same, I'll show you. But they just want more and more water the more area you treat, which tells me there's some sort of a risk here. So I'm gonna recommend that with them telling you you need all of this water, they don't even have a hand can rate for anything larger than this here, 0.8 fluid ounces and 200 square feet. But if you went with that mix rate and tried to blanket spray with a hand can, that means a four gallon hand can is only gonna cover 800 square feet. You're gonna be refilling your freaking thing like every, so again, they're just discouraging it. If you are gonna blanket spray, then go ahead and use a hose end sprayer. But again, this labeling here tells me probably not a good idea, just a spot spray method. And this is really a nuts edge killer. That's what this is for, dollar weed, okay, you know, works fine if you need a different mode of action from something else you're using like atrazine or whatever but either way this is really a a product for nuts edge and it should be sprayed on actively growing turf so not turf that's coming in coming out of dormancy so if your turf is just starting to green up you don't want to spray this you want to make sure the turf is actively growing and again that kind of signal word that they've got going on there tells me there is some risk of injury with this one Okay, so this next one's really interesting to me. Image Southern Lawn Weed Killer. They're really marketing this as a St. Augustine grass weed control and centipede, of course, because those two play nicely together usually. But you could also use this on Bermuda and Zoysia as well. What this is, this is what I'm gonna call the homeowner version of Avenue South. If you ever heard of PBI Gordon, they have a very popular weed control that's used on warm season turf called Avenue South. And this has the very same active ingredient stack. It's just at much lower concentrations. So the reason that this is a really powerful weed control is because it uses three different modes of action to attack the weeds, whereas the previous image that we looked at, Image Controls Nuts Edge, that's really one single active ingredient that has one mode of action. And one more thing I want to point out, when you go to the store to get weed control like this, you're going to have like three different choices here. And the first one is what they call ready to use. And that's what Vanessa in our example had. She had a ready to use weed control, meaning she doesn't have to do any mixing or anything. It comes with its own spray gun and everything on it. You just psh, psh, and you're good to go spraying and praying. That's great for spot sprays, but it's nearly impossible to blanket spray or even large zone spray with that. So RTU is ready to use. Not a bad place to start though if you have a small weed problem and you just wanna kinda of get an idea of modes of action and how things work and how fast they work and all that kind of stuff and really have very, very, very little liability or mistake that you could be making there. The second choice is the liquid concentrate. That's mixing everything in a hand can. That's what I've been talking about. I'm gonna show you next week a lot more on setting up a brand new hand can, how to spray it, how to blanket spray, how to spot spray. We're gonna do all that. We're gonna take that from the beginning. And then the third is something I think a lot of you should consider. That's the ready to use formulations. I grabbed this one here. These guys are not a sponsor. I didn't really even mention them in this video, but this is an atrazine ready to use, but you can see it's a hose end sprayer. This particular one here covers 3,720 square feet, but basically what you do is you just hook your hose up and you let it fly and everything just mixes right there on the go. So this is a good opportunity here, a little bit less opportunity to make a mistake than with the liquid concentrates. Um, and there's no shame in this game. So if this is easy for you, you know, this one in particular covers 3,700 square feet. They're all a little bit different. This can also make a good option for weed control as well as, as well as no concentrates to store over time. So you can do the app and throw this away. Okay, y'all, well, I hope that wasn't too much, but I think it's really interesting to go to the store and just look at all the different products that are available. Now, up north, you may not have that much of a difference in products available to you. They may all be very similar, and we will do the same exercise at a northern big box store here once we get closer into the spring. 
But one thing I did want to tell you is I am going to put out in my weekly email this week a backup or a follow-up to this video, and that will have quite a bit more detail, have some more mix rates in it, some things that you can read, and that's all free to you. Just sign up to my weekly email, and that's when I send out tips in the email. We try to get that out every single Tuesday. I promise you it'll be a help to you. So if you click the link in the description below, you can sign up for my free email list, and we'll get you those tips out every single week. With that, before I close this out here, I did want to mention Loncology. That's in February. I'll put all the information here at the end of the video. We still have like 15 slots left for DIYers if you want to come to Orlando for our Loncology Summit. It's not something you should fly in for or anything like that. It's really for locals, but because it's only like a five hour kind of meet and greet meet up with the DIYers, but all bunch, a ton of YouTubers gonna be there. Uh, I'll list all them here on the bottom. So it is a good opportunity if you're local to Florida, 35 bucks a ticket and we have like 15 left. So I'll put a link in the description below to that if you're somebody that'd like to drive over for that. It's February 22nd. With that, I wanna thank you for watching. I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Don't forget, subscribe to the email. Lots of good things coming up. And then next week, next Thursday, is the very first official regular episode of my podcast, Lawns Across America. With that, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the lawn.